and cutscene time again. And guess what? Oh, maybe not. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, as usual. I tend to do that with cutscenes like this. Huh, that's putting it lightly. But yeah, basically, uh, what happened in that cutscene is Amy found that uh, the Flicky, or Birdie as she calls it, uh, the pendant that it's wearing opens up and it shows family members on a picture. No one still has commented on this yet, but I'd like to know, is this supposed to be Mecha Sonic? Or what is the name of this robot that's in here with the bullets on its hands? For the life of me, I still don't remember the name of it. I know that the other one over here is Metal Sonic. You know, cameo from him. And it's funny, because Metal Sonic is playable on this game once you get all 130 emblems. But anyway. Let's go ahead and get this working. Maybe. Come on. It's a very simple puzzle. We can figure it out. There we go. Okay, it all it took was a little bit of ingenuity. And we are at Amy's last stage, final egg. This one's not quite as bad playing as Amy. Of course, we still have zero one one to deal with. <laughs> Dramatic face. Okay. But yeah, for anyone who knows what the name of that robot is, please tell me in the comments. I would like to know. If anyone's ever played that game, that it's from. Because I think it's from... It might be from Sonic... Sonic 3 and Knuckles or something like that. I just can't remember. And I can't remember the name of the robot. That's what's really bugging me. Not so much the game it's from, but like, the name. But yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and zip through all this. Watch out for the claws. Like I ran into them with Sonic before. Okay, can I just ignore these? Or defeat them, anyway. Okay, no, please, get away from me! Okay, yes, the life was worth it. I don't care. At least we got some rings back. It's not like we had a big boatload. And oh my god, that UFO thing is still following me. Really? Seriously? Okay. We're still running away from the Terminator, guys. <laughs> oh, I remember something else I was going to talk about. Um, Another thing I wanted to discuss with you guys is... um, There's a new show that was on Disney XD... It's called Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Um, I've only seen like a few episodes of it, but I'm just curious. Um, oh, was that a pit? Oh my god, that was a pit. Oh, because we have to wait for an elevator. See? I'm not patient enough for these things. Okay, there's the elevator. It was Zero One who was bothering me right there, though. and made me think I had to go down there. But yeah, I just willingly go down the pit. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> anyway, I was talking about Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Um, what are you guys' uh, thoughts, opinions on it, if you've seen it? It's on Disney XD. I don't know what the exact channel number is, because everyone has a different uh, cable, satellite, internet provider that gives you these shows and channels. But the channel is called Disney XD. It's like a variant of the Disney Channel. Um, my thoughts, it, I could definitely tell it was more geared for children, because definitely with the light-hearted nature it has, and the villain, Betrayus, like, I understand the Pac-Man series has not had a consistent villain, but Betrayus, from what I've seen of him, like, his design's cool, but he doesn't really seem as threatening as some of the other villains that I've seen from the Pac-Man universe, like Spooky from Pac-Man World 2 and Irwin. Like, even Erwin, in my opinion, was more threatening than, uh, uh, 
what this Betrayus uh, ghost is, because that's what Betrayus is. He's like the leader of the ghost army that's in the netherworlds. Which that makes sense, you know, that they have the ghost, because that's the thing with Pac-Man. He eats the ghost when he gets power pellets. Oh, and that's another thing. They're called, like, berries on this game, not power pellets. I do kind of like the idea that they give different abilities depending on which one he eats, because there's more than one variant. There's, like, multiple kinds. Okay, I need to find a way to get up there. There we go. Okay, I knew I could do that attack to get through. And here we have the balloon. So, yay! We're finally out. Completed final egg. But yeah, back to Pac-Man the Ghostly Adventures. Um... I really don't know what to think about it overall. Like, I, I guess I'd have to watch a few more episodes to figure it out. But yeah, it, it really reminds me, like, the writing and style of it. Just I can't help but think of the older shows. I mean, artistically it looks nice. You know, the animation looks good. But uh, just the story, like, the writing reminds me of something you'd see from, like, the late 80s. Like, with The Legend of Zelda and the Super Mario Bros. Super Show cartoons. It's, like, stereotypical... Get from point A to point B, the good guy win, the bad guy loses, that sort of deal. But anyway, back to the story. Oh, the egg carrier. Okay, so that's where we have to head off to. I think. Pretty sure that's where we have to go. Takao's not around to guide us this time, so hopefully I'm not going to wander around aimlessly as I keep talking here. But anyway, um... Yeah, I can definitely tell. I'll be stopping the recording after I finish up Amy's story here, because, uh... My voice is really cracking up now. It does that after I record for about an hour or so. And it helps when I clear it up, too. That's another thing. I usually don't have to do that in recordings, but for some reason it's been really dry today. Oh, and there's one more thing with Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Uh, I think other people have said the same thing too. Like, where is Ms. Pac-Man in this series? Like, I really don't know, like, where she is or if they intend to ever show her. But it just doesn't, it just feels weird that Ms. Pac-Man's not part of the cast. Like, with the characters and all. Like, I could... Like, it shows Pac-Man being in high school, I guess, is what it is. It's either high school or college. I think it's high school, though, from what's been said about it. And oh my god, Amy, you climb so slow. Why can't you be, like, big? Uh, Gamma's still the worst climber, though. He definitely does not climb that well at all. But anyway, um... I don't know if the character, or uh, pardon me, if Ms. Pac-Man's gonna be, ever be introduced on this show at all. I don't think so from what I've seen so far. Maybe this is just like a backstory to show a younger Pac-Man. Because like I said, it shows him being in high school and all. I guess that's all I can figure from it, is that like, you know, this is before he met Ms. Pac-Man maybe? Because it would feel really awkward for her to never like appear again in the future for Pac-Man. Speaking of which, uh, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and for 3DS have also been announced. Uh, everyone's going Gaga for Mega Man. I personally like the Villager from Animal Crossing. I like that's my favorite of the newcomers that's been shown so far. And the Wii Fit Trainer is so hilarious, but yet like weird. It's a very weird addition because it's like someone that nobody ever expected to be shown on the series like it's the least likely character anyone would have thought would have been a fighter uh oh targeting radical animal cruelty and amy is now furious <laughs> you tell him we totally needed that shot by the way 
Anyway, it looks like I'm not going to get it in this playthrough. I might show it for next time as like a little added bonus or something. But basically, we missed out on getting an upgrade for Amy. It was the long hammer. It's basically the same Pico Pico hammer that she has. Why is it called Zero? I thought it was Zero One. Okay, I remember what we have to do now. Um, you have to lure Zero, as it's apparently called, because I thought it was Zero One. Okay, one ring. whoop de doo Yeah, you have to electrify Zero One, or Zero, to get him to open up his head and reveal his weak spot on his brain. Not a very hard boss fight, but it does make sense that Amy's finally able to destroy this Terminator. <laughs> okay. One more time, and you are terminated. Nice shiny explosions. And you are dead for good. Finally. That zero totally deserved it, though. I'm still confused by the name. I could have swore it was zero one. But I guess it's just zero. Now, what doesn't get explained is if zero is supposed to be like the alpha of the E100 series, maybe? Or if it's e it might not even be part of the E100 series, and that's why it has the name it has. But yeah, Birdie it was still in good shape after all. And what isn't shown here is just moments before Amy came with uh, Birdie. Beta and Gamma both blew up to reveal their true forms, the two members of the Flicky family. Family, if I can talk. <laughs> if I can learn to talk, that'd be nice. Again, I'm still learning, guys. But yeah, that the other thing I was talking about was Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and for 3DS. Uh, guest characters. People are still wondering like who else they're gonna have. Since it's uh, since Namco Bandai is behind the development. It really would not surprise me to see Pac-Man actually be a playable character for those games. I could definitely see that happening. Just because, you know, Namco Bandai's behind it. And a Tekken character is definitely, you know, speculation as well. Makes sense. But from what I've heard, N Nintendo said that they weren't going to go, like, super heavy on the guest characters. And it makes sense. Because they want to stick with uh, the hardcore Nintendo characters themselves. You know, because that's... You know, that is the name. It's called Super Smash Brothers, but it's also, like, a homage to Nintendo's history in a way, too, at the same time. But anyway, we have completed Amy's story and the last story of all six characters. Yay! Finally. Felt like it took forever. And even this recording stretched out to be quite long. I'm not sure how many videos I'll be making for Amy's segments. Probably three. Because she had three stages and... A lot of cutscenes. I do feel like they made Amy's story stretched out more with the cutscenes that they've added. And additional features as well, such as the Zero fight, or Zero One. I'm still, like, half leery on what the true name of that robot is. The Terminator is still what I like to call it, but still. And then we also have, uh... Uh, something else. There was... Oh shoot, what was I going to talk about? There was one more thing. Oh, I remember now. Since I'll be getting a Wii U, uh, definitely getting the Super Smash Brothers. Both of the games, actually. The 3DS one as well. Because they're going to have different stages between the two versions from what I've seen and heard about the development of it. And seen the pictures of. And videos. So that will definitely be something cool coming out to look forward to. I'd like to see connectivity between the two versions, though. Like, they were talking about that. Like, does, like, for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, like, how they had stickers power up the character's trophies for the Subspace Emissary Adventure mode. I'm thinking something like that, like, for the 3DS version to put them on the Wii U, and vice versa. Like, you could power them up for the single-player campaign through some kind of feature connectivity like that. That'd be kind of neat. I don't see the 3DS version being used in tandem 
with the Wii U version though because uh, the art style is different. Like for the 3DS version, they have them highlighted in, like in this line that goes around them so that they could be distinguished from the background and foreground better. It's just the art style they go with so that you can actually see the characters better. I guess that was the story behind it. I don't know. But the graphical differences uh, definitely, you know, I don't see them doing connectivity between the two in a sense that the 3DS version could be used to fight with the other people in the Wii U version and vice versa. I don't see that happening. But some kind of connectivity would be nice. That would be nice. I feel like Nintendo has strafed from that lately over the years. Because even like for the the Wind Waker HD remake, uh, they did announce that the Tingle Tuner is now gone. It's now the Tingle Bottles, which in my opinion was very disappointing. I really liked the Tingle Tuner, and the gamepad totally had potential. There was really no excuse for that. The gamepad made total sense to use for the Tingle Tuner. And, like, everyone was assuming this, too. And then they announced that, you know, it seems like a pretty big letdown. I think part of the reason, though, too, is because they didn't want speedrunners to be successful with zombie hovering, because on the original Wind Waker for GameCube, you had to use uh, Red Ting or Blue Ting, whatever you bought, to heal Link as he came out of zombie hover, so that you could do sequence breaks in dungeons and stuff. Because Nintendo's been big on that lately. They've been trying to go back to their older games and fix glitches. Like, I know um, some people may argue, well, we meant to leave the glitches in. Because they claim they did that with the 3DS version. But they still fixed a lot of stuff, like Infinite Sword glitch and things like that. But my basic point is, you know, Nintendo, I think what it is, it's just a pride thing for them. And when they see glitches like that in their games, you know, they kind of feel ashamed. Because it's like, oh... It's faulty game architecture. We should have had it fixed so the players wouldn't be running into this kind of stuff. You know, I could see the point of view that they're coming from. I don't think they're, like, anally out to get things like that, though. But I know just from what I've seen so far in re-releases of some of their games, you know, that they're, d they're doing what they can to fix all these glitches. There's just no question about that. But anyway, oh, and one other uh, Wii U game that I'm really excited for, though, is uh, um, Pikmin 3. I had to think about it for a second. That's coming out really soon, too, and by the time I get the Wii U, I should be getting that game, too. So I'm really looking forward to that. There's a lot of things I'm really looking forward to. It'll be really cool to actually have the Wii U for, for once. Because I've been playing, like, I only played it, like, a couple times. Uh, once at a friend's, uh, it was like a Christmas party last year, and they had the Wii U, and they had Nintendo Land, and stuff like that to play. It was a lot of fun, and I was definitely addicted to the gamepad. Like, I think it's a comfort zone for me, because it feels like the 3DS, and I think that's just something I really appreciate about it. But anyway, back to the game here, since we have this going on, I guess. <laughs> I've been ignoring it, so pardon me on that. Well, there really wasn't much to say, though, about it. I mean, Amy saved the Flicky family and got Birdie reunited with his Flicky uh, family, that's what I should say, who were also Gamma and Beta after they blew up. But it was, like, moments before Amy arrived, she could have found out who their true identities were. But anyway, when we go to the stories, the adventure mode here, we have Supersonic Story unlocked. So I'll be getting to this next time. Uh, obviously, this is the last part of the game. There's actually not too much to do with this part of the story, so this will probably be like a video or two, I'm thinking. But we're pretty much at the finale of Sonic Adventure DX, the Let's Play. And I promise, Wario World will be coming soon, as soon as I finish this game first. I know everyone's been looking forward to that. And more Kirby Air Ride, too. Everyone's wanted Kirby Air Ride suddenly lately. I'll have to talk about that a little bit later in future videos. But until then, this is Tobe Wonderland. My mouth is so dry and exhausted from all that commentary. I'm going to go get a drink of water, and I will see you guys next time with more of Let's Play Sonic Adventure DX. Peace out, guys.